Hey, my fat eyes, it's me, Tyler, and I'm back for another video. And y'all already know what time it is. It's time for another, hey, documentary review. Hey, documentary review. Hey, documentary review. So guys, this documentary review is gonna be on the documentary, The Social Dilemma. And that's a documentary that's on Netflix right now. It just came out. It's really, really, really good. Even though I feel like everybody should watch this documentary, I do feel like black people and people of a lower socioeconomic status should definitely watch this because it's really, it's going to affect us more than it affects the average person. And I'm just keeping it real. And I'm going to explain more about that just a little bit later. But first, I do want to get into what I have on. These pajamas are from my friend's line called Pretty Chill Nights. Her name is Christina, and she is coming out with this new pajama line. And these, I got first dibs on these. Of course, we got my favorite food on there, tacos, and they are so comfortable. And when she comes out, like does the full lunch, I'm definitely going to let my tight eyes know, and I'm definitely going to put her information in the description box so you guys can order, of course, so y'all can, you know, be sexy and comfortable like your girl. <laughs> okay, so back to the social dilemma. There are two things that I really, really like about this documentary. Number one is the fact that they got people that used to work at all different kinds of social networking sites. Not just Facebook, not just Instagram, not just Twitter, not just Snapchat. They got people that work for Pinterest, people that work for Google Docs, Google Mail, all those types of social media outlets that we don't even notice is also social media and using the same algorithm. And they were talking about how all of it's addicting, how all of it um, kind of manipulates your mind little by little and that you don't even know it. And even those sites that I just said, Pinterest, Google Docs, um, Google Mail, those sites can be addicting as well. They're just as bad and they manipulate your mind just as well. Because some people may think that because it's not Facebook or Instagram or something like that, that it's still, you know, not as bad. But it is because it's all using this same core algorithm to like mess with your mind. Okay. So that's one thing that I really liked about the documentary. The second thing I really liked about the documentary is normally when you see a documentary that cuts from people talking to a dramatization of what's going on, it's normally like a crime documentary, like Four by Man or uh, what's another one? Um, what is it? American Greed, all those types of documentaries. It goes from, you know, experts speaking to this dramatization of like what's going on or what happened in the documentary. And they did this for this one. And I thought that was very interesting. Like they had a whole nother storyline going on on the side to basically show you how important this information is that they're giving you. And it really, I really like that part because it really drove home the point that this, this is serious. So this documentary basically elaborates on, to me, it elaborates on the documentary, The Great Hack. I don't know if y'all watched that one, but that was talking about how um, social media played a huge part in affecting our election, this, this past um, presidential election that we had. Um, how it just changes our mind. It causes polarization. And, you know, you to really be on one side or the other, depending upon what your news feed looks like, to be honest. And the great hack was, went into it in detail, but it left us thinking that the social media people were trying to sell our data. That was like the main what I got from the documentary anyway. But from this documentary, the people that used to work there or whatever, they're like, no, 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 no. Not, they're not trying to sell your data. They're trying to sell you as a whole, your time, how long you scroll on there. You know, they're trying to, you are the product. They're not trying to sell your data. That would, you know, that wouldn't even yield enough money that they could possibly make if they just giving out people data. They're selling like us in a whole, like what we doing, our advertisers, like, 
what okay so here it's kind of hard to explain but how the algorithm works is it looks at how long we look at stuff what we looking at what exactly you know what pages we going to how long we watch stuff um just everything everything that you can imagine they are keeping tabs on all of it and so with this information the algorithm can keep fixing itself keep fixing itself keep fixing itself to get all of us to continue to stay on these social media sites but with that comes manipulation of our mind making us watch things that we've continuing to click on so that's what they're selling to companies basically what 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 we're looking at so they're like all right so an example would be this person is the alt-right racist or blah 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 whatever and so they're always looking up you know how how to protect yourself from you know the the civil war da 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 and now the gun company is like oh we need this many amount of people to see our ad and so facebook is like oh okay so this person um always talking about war and this this this, this blah, blah, blah. so we're gonna stick this ad right here that's kind of how it works but on a huge large scale so the reason why this really really concerned me is because it's affecting everyone it is it's affecting everyone it's affecting our children all young people, we we worried about how people look at us and, you know, worried about what, what how we presented ourselves on social media. It makes us more anxious. It makes us more nervous. It's affecting everybody in this negative way. However, I am very, very concerned, like I said, about black people and people of a low socioeconomic status, how this is affecting us. I will say, number one, the polarization topic so these companies like youtube facebook and instagram or whatever they're not purposely malicious like they're not trying to put police brutality black people getting beat up karen's calling the police on us they're not trying to constantly put that in our face but what's happening is because of the algorithm and that's what we continue to click on because we're so horrified by it or that's what we continue to look at because we're so horrified by it that that's what they're going to continue to show us. So I feel like as black people, it's making us more anxious. It's making us more angry. It's making us less trustworthy of all white people. I, I And you want to know something? It was, it's really hitting home with me because I, I do know I experienced racism and stuff before the drop of social media, like when I was younger. But I will say that, you know, every five seconds is police brutality or, you know, somebody being racist. And I'm seeing this and, and I'm seeing fights and all type of stuff break out. And I'm always seeing this on my social media because of the algorithm. And I know that it's doing something to my mental health, especially when all that looting and rioting and all of that went out like to see what people were saying about black people even our own people like it was just very they shooting outside or something i'm sorry y'all excuse my outside as you it was just very it was a lot for me i felt very emotional during that time which i still do wherever i see all of this stuff and like i said these people they do not care they're not trying to they're not saying oh this person probably should not see police brutality this person probably should not see joyce george floyd get choked out every five seconds on video when they're scrolling they don't care they just they just know the algorithm gonna keep showing you what you've been looking at basically so i feel like that is very you know, I don't know. It's it's not good for us. And another thing that they were explaining, which which opened my eyes a lot, is I know we say this all the time as black people. Like, how could you not fucking know? Like, how do you not understand what's going on? Don't you see on your timeline every five seconds a black person getting murdered by the police or a black person getting beat up by the police or police brutality? Don't you see that every five seconds? When really they don't they don't see it every five seconds in your timeline looks completely different from the average white person it so as much as we see it as much as we go through it in person they have no idea for real and be and we feel like because the internet then came out and social media is such this big large tool that they still you know they still should be able to understand what's going on 
No, because they're not seeing that. Even Google, they was telling... That's in the documentary as well. Even Google shows you something different depending upon what you look up and where you stay. So the person in Virginia, if they look up police brutality or something, they're probably going to find articles and stuff about, you know, how it's, how it's BS, how we just making it up. And if we look it up here in Georgia, in the South, we probably going to find, you know... Stuff that further makes us angry and further prove our point. So they even spoke about it in the documentary. What we fear has happened before in a country called Myanmar. Um, they don't, th th those people don't really know much about social media. But every time somebody was buying a phone, the person who sold them the phone was downloading Facebook on it and making them a profile. And so their political people took, you know, took Facebook and started giving them ads and videos and, and pushing this narrative of the um, the Muslims there were bad people. So people started killing all the Muslims. The Muslims had to flee from this country. Like, it was terrible. Very, very terrible. And that's what I fear for my people. Like, I fear that we're going to get so angry, so upset that, you know, looting, gonna, that's not even going to be the biggest issue. You know what I'm saying? It might be other things. Like, we just might explode from everything that's been happening to us. They're not putting in, they're not factoring in the last 400 years or whenever. Like, when we have, not only have we put, experienced police brutality, but we have experienced slavery. We've experienced Jim Crow. We've experienced people burning down our cities and all types of stuff. And we can find this information from the past on on the internet and we also can find information of what's going on right now and we can find uh, people's opinion that align with ours other angry upset people and this this information is being pumped to us at a at an astronomical speed so it's really it's really affecting us more than anything how i feel i feel like we are subject to you know, for our emotions to really, really be affected, number one. And number two, our children. That's the biggest thing for me. Um, as far as, like I said, black people and people of a lower socioeconomic class, this is really going to fuck with our kids. And, I, and this is why I say this. Because they said that it, it increases anxiety, stress, it it makes you less likely to do your schoolwork. I'm talking about in like middle school students and high school students. It makes you less likely to do your work. It makes you not want to take risks like join a team or this, that, and the third. All type of stuff. And what these companies are not factoring in, I feel like, is the disadvantages that we already are at. What we already cannot get. An example would be like, I feel like most, most of America, white middle class America, if their child falls behind, you know, from stress, anxiety, social media, they have more tools, more resources to help that child. They have, you know, more, they have more of everything to be able, for, to, be able to help their child to put their best foot forward even despite social media. But somebody who living in poverty, somebody who of a lower social economic class, somebody who, you know, didn't really get a fighting chance from the beginning. And y'all know it's a huge separation between how they teach you in school on the South end and how they teach you in school, you know, closer to the white sides of town in certain places. It's definitely like that here where I'm from. Definitely. Like the, you know, the the hooder schools they get they get less than the schools on the north side i know from personal experience but with that being said we're already getting less and if social media is fucking everybody up as far as like we not you know we're not as focused as we used to be and we spending more time on there it's making us more anxious more nervous who do you think that's gonna affect the most 
the people that's already not getting, you know, not getting the education that they deserve, you know, the people whose intellect is not, not there, they're just going to continue to scroll, continue to scroll because they don't know any better. They, they don't have, they mama at work. They don't have a mom to sit there and, you know, regulate what they doing and this, that, and third. Like, and these companies, they're not putting that stuff into perspective. So we, if we don't, take this shit by the reins or whatever, like it's us black people and people of a lower socioeconomic status, if we don't really take heed to this, it's going to affect us the most, y'all. It really, really is. That's why I feel like black people really, really need to watch this documentary and take heed to it. And really, because I think I'm going to definitely not think, but I know my kids are definitely going to have less screen time since I watched it. Because I don't want them to be like that. I don't want them to fall behind. I don't want, you know, I don't want them to experience extra stress, extra anxiety because of the, of, of the continuous scrolling. I don't want that to happen. And so I really, really feel like y'all should, you know, wake up and watch this documentary. At least give it a little bit of your time and, you know, change accordingly to what you think. And if y'all like this documentary, make sure you let me know. Drop down in the comments and tell me what you think. And if you like documentary reviews like this, make sure you like comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i post and i'll see y'all